What's up guys? I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time. This is the ultimate guide to Sephora. So I am gonna be going through each brand from A to Z and talking about my top favorite product. In some cases, I have more than one favorite. I really tried my best because I don't want this video to be too super long, but in some cases it was just impossible to pick one. So I really wanted to do this because I feel like going to Sephora and shopping can be a really overwhelming experience for a lot of us. There's so many brands, so many different products and everything's really on the more expensive side. So you want to make sure that you're making smart decisions and hopefully this guide will help you all out a little bit. So I don't want to make too long of an intro. Like I said, it's going to be a super, super long video. Let's just get into it. All right, so like I said before, we're just gonna go from A to Z. I don't have a product for every single brand only because there are some brands I haven't tried. So in that case, I'm just gonna skip over it. But I would say we have probably like 95% of the brands that Sephora covered here. So. Brand number one is Alpen Beauty. So this is a brand that is skincare and it's based in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And the founder of the brand moved there from New York City and she noticed that because of the higher altitude where she was living, her skin was really super dry. So she wanted to create a skincare line around combating that dryness basically. So they have sent me PR in the past and I have to say I wasn't super enthused with quite a few of the creams that they sent because they have this like really medicinal herbal scent that I just couldn't get past. Whether the formulas were good or not, I don't know because I only tried them each once. The smell just really, really got to me. But there are two products that don't have that scent that I wanted to talk about really quickly quickly. The first one is their pore perfecting liquid. This is 2% BHA and barrage. And I've used this a couple of times and I do think it's a really nice exfoliator because it's BHA though. It's more meant for like oily to combo skin. I think for dry skin, you don't want to use a product like this too much because the beta hydroxy acids can dry you out. But at the same time, they are really pore smoothing. They kind of help your pores to snap back to their original size and become like less noticeable and this product also didn't have any irritation for me like some of these can so I really love how smooth this gets my skin but it's just something that I use maybe like once a week I don't use it on a regular basis and I would say the product I like the most from them is the super peptide and ghostberry barrier repair cream so this is a really thick luxurious cream I like it a lot it has a thick texture and especially on my dry skin it feels really really good it doesn't have a noticeable scent and it has, I think, eight different peptides in it. So it's more of like an anti-aging kind of formula and it has ceramides to help replenish your skin's barrier and it has that ghost berry to soothe your skin. So I just find this to be like a really thick, comforting cream. It is quite heavy, so if you don't have really dry skin, you're probably not gonna love it. I mainly use it at night, kind of like an overnight mask type of treatment. So I really like that cream so far. I haven't been using it for a super long time. It's fairly new, but I think it makes my skin super hydrated and plumped up. Next, when it comes to Anastasia Beverly Hills, I really couldn't just pick one product. There are several that I just really love that I keep going back to over and over again. The first one is their blush sticks. So these are actually fantastic. I don't hear a lot of people talking about them, but I have two shades. I have Peachy Keen, which is gorgeous. I'll just show you these swatches up close in a second. And Latte, which is one of my favorite blush stick colors of all time. And the reason is because it's like this super cool toned pinky nude. And I feel like a lot of times pinky nude shades are a little bit warmer and kind of more peachy, but this one is like this beautiful dusty rose color. So this is Latte up here, and then this is Peachy Keen. And I also love the formula of these two because they're not greasy and they dry right to like a powder finish. So I think they blend really well on the skin. They're so nice. Another thing from Anastasia, of course, are their palettes particularly Soft Glam, which is an old favorite. I mean, you cannot go wrong with this one. I actually just bought a new one because my old one was getting kind of crusty and I love it that much that it was a repurchase for me. So it's just warm neutrals, but it's fantastic. It's one of the most used palettes in my collection over the years. So I really love this. And also I have been using the Nouveau palette so much lately too. I'm actually wearing that today on my eyes. This one shade in particular, Lily, that I'm wearing, 
is just so stunning. It's like this gorgeous duochrome. I love that color so much. And I'm also wearing um, this one in my crease and I put this one in the outer corner. So it's just kind of giving a little bit more of a warm tone look. But overall, I feel like this is just such a beautiful spring palette. And I also wanna talk about their satin lipsticks because I don't hear a lot of people talking about these either, but I love a good satin lipstick because if I'm not in the mood for gloss and I want an actual lipstick, I feel like matte formulas can be so so dry on me. So this one is perfect. And this is the shade Rose Dream. And look at how beautiful that one is. It's one of my favorite colors that I reach for over and over again. And these are so comfortable that they almost feel like a balm. They're just so soft and silky. So I definitely plan on getting this formula in more colors because I've really been enjoying it. Moving on to Bare Minerals, I know they have tons of complexion products. Their original powder foundation is a favorite of many. Their Complexion Rescue Tinted Moisturizer is also really nice. I like that a lot. If I had to pick a favorite product though, I would say their Blonzer. I have some that are in the old packaging and then I have some of the new colors that are in the newer packaging. And I just think these are so beautiful. They have that little bit of sheen. So they give your cheeks that glow without being overly sparkly. I'm actually wearing Kiss of Pink today on my cheeks. So you can see like there's just a little hint of something, but it's not like a highlighter blush in one type of deal. So just swatching these out on my hand really quick, I have Kiss of Spice, Kiss of Mauve or Mauve, Kiss of Copper, and then Kiss of Pink down on the bottom. And I just love these. They are so soft. They blend out beautifully on the skin. I think they're fantastic. And I do really like their um, Gen Nude blushes too. Those are also a phenomenal formula. They're just the matte version. So if you don't want the little bit of glow that the bronzers have, definitely check out the Gen Nude blushes because those are really nice too. All right, so I already messed up. I skipped over Armani Beauty. So let's quickly go back to A for a second. And you know, I know a lot of people love their Luminous Silk Foundation. I tried it, I wasn't impressed. I didn't feel like it looked that great on my skin type at least. But one thing that I do really love from them are their blushes and they are very pricey, but I feel like the formula is so nice. I have one of them and it's the shade Ecstasy, which is this really bright, cool tone pink. And I think the formula of these is also beautiful, very silky. I think it blends out seamlessly on the skin. To be honest, I haven't tried that many other Armani products from the line. So if there's something really good that you'd recommend, let us know down in the comments. So going back to B, after Bare Minerals, we have Basma. And this is a new brand that I haven't tried at all, but people keep requesting that I try it. So if there are things that you recommend from this line, I know they have cream blushes. People have mentioned their foundation stick as well. So if there are things that are really good, um, let, let us know down in the comments and I'll definitely try some things from them. Next we have Belief. So I don't have anything from Belief at the moment, but one product that I have tried from them is their True Cream, the Moisturizing Balm. That is a really, really nice moisturizer. It was super hydrating on my dry skin. I used to use it at night and it was fantastic. And they also have like a gel version if you have oily skin. So that could definitely be one to try. I believe the Moisturizing Balm has peptides and ceramides in it. So it really helped to like plump up my skin. And when I woke up in the morning, my skin and always looked really good. So that was a product I definitely loved from them. Moving on to Benefit. Benefit is one of those brands that doesn't like thrill me. I would say they're most well known for their brow products. And I think their brow products are some of the best things that they offer. I've really enjoyed their Gimme Brow in the past. It's a brow gel that has little fibers in it. So it kind of helps to like fluff up your brows and it has a tiny little spoolie, which I liked. Um, also their brow pencil, their microfine brow pencil is really great. I just started trying their brow micro filling pen. I got this super recently and it's in the shade light brown. Unlike a lot of the other brow pens that I've tried, this one has three prongs to it and they're all different lengths. So it's kind of supposed to mimic the hairs. When you're drawing it into your brows, I feel like it really does make those very hair-like strokes. I actually used it in my brows today. So let me just show you. And I think this color is perfect for me. It's a nice ashy brown. There's no warmth to it at all. For the past year or so, I've been using the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen from the drugstore, and I like that one a lot. I have ash brown. I think it's a great color for me, but I also think that sometimes the pen can get like a little bit goopy. Sometimes it's fine, and other times, all of a sudden, a bunch of ink will come out and I'll ruin my brows. And I like this one because you can press pretty hard with it and not too much ink comes out. So I've found this one to be easier to control so far, but I'll have to 
keep you guys updated. I'm gonna play with it a little bit more. As far as the rest of Benefits line, I know a lot of people love their mascaras. They tend to smudge on me pretty heavily, so I usually avoid those. And also their blushes and their hula bronzer are nice enough. I don't love that they come in those kind of chunkier boxes. They're harder for me to store, and I just, I'm not crazy about the packaging overall. I think the formula is nice, but I would say number one for Benefit would be their brow products for sure. Next up is the brand Biosance, and I have used their 100% squalane oil, and I really enjoyed that a lot, but I also think it's overpriced for just being 100% squalane oil. It's like $34, I think, and I've been using a squalane oil from The Ordinary that's 10 bucks now, and it's basically the same. I don't notice a difference, so I won't be repurchasing the one from Biosance, and I did try some of their other skincare products as well. I wanna say like two years ago. They were okay, but nothing that really wowed me too much. Next, we have the brand Blink, and they're known for tubing mascaras. I don't know if they were like the OG tubing mascara brand, but they were, I mean, they've been around a really long time. And a couple years back when I really started getting into tubing mascaras, I tried a few of theirs. I felt like they were decent. They were okay, but I definitely have some tubing formulas that I like a little bit more, which I'll get into later in this video. Um, but they're, they're pretty good. If you like tubing mascaras, they have several different options to choose from as far as different formulas and brushes and all of that. Next, when it comes to Bobbi Brown, I haven't tried a lot of things from her line, but I have a few that I wanted to mention that I just couldn't pick between them because I love them all. So the first one is this tinted lip balm. This is called the Oil Infused Lip Tint, and it is kind of pricey. What shade do I have? I have the shade Bear Blackberry. So it kind of almost looks like a Clinique Black Honey. And it's actually a super subtle color, even though it looks dark in the tube. So I'll just show you a quick swatch. What I love about this though, is how cushiony it is. It is so plush and it has a thicker texture. It's not sticky, but it's so thick that I feel like it just kind of fills in my lip lines and makes everything look so smooth. So this has actually become one of my favorite tinted lip balm formulas because like I said, I just love the way it makes my lips look. Also, their crushed oil infused gloss. I have two shades of these and these are also fantastic. To me, these are a cross between a lip oil and a lip gloss. So they have this really thin, lightweight texture like a lip oil, but they're super nourishing and they have a lot of shine. They're not overly pigmented, so they're more for like those no makeup makeup sort of days, but I have the shades In the Buff, which is on the top, and then Force of Nature, which is more like a mauve shade down below. And I just absolutely love the formula of these. It's so good. And then the third Bobbi Brown product I wanted to talk about is the Pot Rouge for lips and cheeks. So this is another product that's kind of similar to the Stila Convertible color. I find it to be pretty similar to that. Um, this is in the shade Powder Pink, and it has a little bit of like a thicker, stickier texture, but I find that it has great staying power. So this color also is gorgeous. It looks really natural. It has a slightly dewy finish. It's not something that dries down completely matte. And I love that you can use it on both lips and cheeks. So it's just a great two-in-one sort of product. Next up, we have Bumble and Bumble. And I have their Hairdressers Invisible Oil. This entire Hairdressers Invisible line is my favorite from them. I've tried so many other products from Bumble and Bumble. I think overall, they're a great brand. But this is the one that I feel like just works the best with my hair because I have very fine hair, even though I have a lot of it, it's very fine in texture and it can get greasy and weighed down really fast. So the invisible oil is all meant to be nourishing, but at the same time, lightweight. So I love to use this oil. Once I've styled my hair and everything's done, I put like one or two drops in the palm of my hand, just rub it together and mainly focus on the ends and just kind of helps to like seal the split ends a little bit, kind of conceal everything and gives my hair a little bit of shine without making it greasy or weighed down. I also really enjoy the shampoo and conditioner in this line. And they also have a leave-in like primer spray that you can spray before blow drying. And I've tried that before too. So I find the whole hairdresser's invisible oil line from them to be really, really good. So if you have fine hair that also is dry and in need of some hydration, these are really great. All right, moving on to C. I'm gonna try to hopefully speed things up a little bit because we're only on C in this video. Like I said, it's gonna be so long. All right, we have Cali Ray. So Cali Ray, I have a couple things I wanna talk about. The first one, I don't have any more. I had over the summer and it's the Come Hell or High Water Mascara. So this is a tubing formula that I really enjoyed a lot. 
I don't think it gives me quite as big of lashes as the Tarte Tubing Mascara or the Hourglass one, which again, I'm gonna talk about a little later in the video. Um, but I do think like if you like a more natural lash look with just a little bit of length and volume, this is a really nice one. It doesn't smudge, it doesn't flake, it comes off just with warm water. So I love that stuff. Also, their primer, So Blown, is fantastic. I am actually wearing this primer today under my foundation, and it is such a good blurring formula. It has this thick, cushiony, like almost velvety feel, and it just makes your foundation lay so beautifully on your skin. I also feel like it has kind of like a plumping effect. I noticed that it minimizes the fine lines and wrinkles. It's so nice. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a blurring primer. This is like my favorite. And I also wanted to mention their Super Bloom Hydrating Lip and Cheek Stains. So I got these over the summer last year, 2023 and I wore them almost every single day. I brought them on vacations with me. I love these because they're a stain that's not drying at all. So I can actually wear these on my lips and I don't feel like my lips are crying out for moisture and lip balm within half an hour of putting them on. They just have this gorgeous creamy feel. So I have Wildflower up here on the top, and then this one is Dawn Patrol, which is more of a nude. The colors are so beautiful, and they just leave the softest stain behind. The little bit of shine that they give wears away, but the color remains. I mean, even now, I just put them on my hand and wiped them with a cloth, and you can still see that little bit of color left behind, so they're definitely very effective stains, yet they don't have that really dry, alcohol-y kind of feeling that a lot of stains do, so I highly recommend those as well. Next up, we have Caudalie, and they are a French skincare company that I haven't used in many, many years, at least most of their products. I used to use them when I worked at Sephora back between 2004, 2007, so we're talking like almost 20 years ago. I used to love their face mist that they have. It's kind of like a dual phase mist. It has a little bit of oil in it and it's really hydrating on your skin. So I used to use that and I used to love it. I haven't tried it, like I said, in many years, but there is one product that I have continued to repurchase and it's their hand and nail repairing cream. So as you can see, this is well used already. I'm almost done with this tube, I think. So those of you who have been watching my channel for a while know that I have extremely dry hands and I've gotten a lot of rude comments over the years about my hands and also some very well-meaning ones, people who are recommending different hand creams to me. And believe me, I've tried them all. I've tried everything, but nothing really stays on my hands for too long because the reason they look like this is because I am a germaphobe and I wash my hands so many times a day that really no hand cream stays on for very long. But that being said, I do really like this hand cream from Caudalie. It's something that I can put on multiple times throughout the day and it sinks in quickly. So it doesn't leave like the greasy film. Like if I'm touching things, I don't feel like I'm leaving greasy prints everywhere. But even though it has a light lighter weight texture and it's not greasy, it still hydrates really well. So this is something that I've repurchased many, many times over the last 20 years and I really do like it and it smells nice too. It has a nice light, pleasant kind of citrusy scent. So this is a good one. All right, next up we have the brand K Skin. This is another brand I haven't tried too many things from, but the one product I have tried I really like and it's their Isle Lip Balm, which has SPF 30 and I have it in the shade Nude Ting. So I think it's pretty rare that you find a lip balm that has SPF. And I got this recently because we're heading into that time in the Northeast where we're just outside a lot more. So I just wanna make sure that I'm protecting my lips. And I just want you guys to see this color because it's so beautiful and it's actually quite pigmented as well. And it has a nice thin formula. It's not sticky in the slightest bit and it has this amazing vanilla brown sugar scent that's so delicious. So this definitely might be something to check out if you're looking for a lip balm that has SPF in it. I just think that is so, so important. I've had skin cancer twice, so I'm always looking to protect myself any way that I can. Next, when it comes to Charlotte Tilbury, this was hard because I think so many of her products are just like really overhyped and kind of overpriced for what they are. I think they're good, like they're decent, but I also think a lot of them are things that you can find for much more affordable prices at the drugstore. But there is one product of hers that I feel like I've never been able to duplicate it anywhere else, and it's her Eyes to Mesmerize. These are cream eyeshadows, and they're so fantastic. They have a fluffy, moussey texture, and they are just so smooth on your eyes 
They last all day. I'm just gonna put it on the other hand because I feel like I have this Cali Ray stains over here now and it's gonna mess things up. Um, but this is the shade Pillow Talk and it's such a pretty color. My favorite shade is Oyster Pearl and I can't find mine. I have no idea where it is. It's here somewhere, but I had to stop looking for it because I had to just sit down and make the video. But that one is kind of like a grayish green. It has like this little bit of a greenish undertone. It's beautiful. And that's the one that I wear the most. But I just think that the texture of these is wonderful. They have just a really nice satiny finish. They're not matte, but they also don't have like a lot of glitter and glow. So they're great one and done shadows. And I wear especially Oyster Pearl all the time. Now, if you're familiar with the brand Moira, they did come out with like a more affordable version of these pots but I didn't find them to be the same. I thought the Moira ones creased on me throughout the day, they faded. There's just nothing else quite like these out there on the market. So I think if you're gonna buy something from Charlotte Tilbury, check these out because I think they're more of a unique product and they're really great. Moving on to Clarins, my favorite product by far is their lip oil. This lip oil is phenomenal. There are some at the drugstore that you can get that I find are similar. Milani's lip oil, for example, the fruit fetish one is pretty close to this, but these are just my absolute favorite. They have such a plush and cushiony feel on your lips. They look so smoothing on your lips and the applicator as well. There are a lot of applicators that look like this, but this one, when you're putting it on, it just feels like really puffy and luxurious. Like it's hard to explain what I'm talking about, but when I'm putting this on, it's just like a nice feeling. I don't know, it's weird. It all just kind of goes toward the experience, I guess. But this is the type of lip oil that you put it on and even, like hours and hours later when the shininess from it goes away and you're eating and drinking, your lips still feel hydrated. It's just that they really like hug your lips, I guess, and the hydration just sticks around a really long time. So this is my number one favorite product from Clarins. Although I did wanna quickly mention the One Step Gentle Exfoliating Cleanser because I got this recently and I've been loving this too. It has such a cool texture. A lot of face scrubs I think are like kind of hard and scratchy and this one is super soft. It has like this very um, slushy sort of a texture and yet at the same time it exfoliates really well. Like once I'm done using this, my skin feels baby soft and smooth and it also doesn't hurt that it has a scent that is really nostalgic nostalgic for me. It smells like something from my childhood. I can't think of what it is, but it's kind of soapy, a little citrusy. I don't know. It's very pleasant. Overall, it's just a really nice face scrub to use. So I just wanted to mention that as well. And then when it comes to Clinique, there are quite a few products I could talk about in this video, but I, if I had to pick one thing, it would be the Almost Lipstick. And I know everybody talks about Black Honey, but don't discount Pink Honey either. I think that's the one that I wear even more often than Black Honey because it's just the perfect nudie pink shade. And I love this formula so much because again, it has that really cushiony, super soft texture. So we have um, Pink Honey on the top and then Black Honey on the bottom. Um, it kind of feels similar to the Bobbi Brown one that I showed earlier. So this one's a few bucks cheaper than the Bobbi Brown. So these are 25, I think hers is 34. But as far as tinted lip balms go, I think these are one of the nicest formulas out there, especially if you have dry lips, they're super nourishing, really comfortable. And I also feel like I can't talk about Clinique without mentioning their cheek pop blushes too, because these are such an interesting formula. They're a powder blush, but they say that they have like a non-powder texture and really like these are some of the least powdery powder blushes out there. They're ultra smooth and they seem like they almost melt right into your skin. Here are the swatches of the two colors I have. We have Nude Pop on the top and then Pink Honey Pop on the bottom. And these are two of the lightest shades. And by the way, if you see Pink Honey Pop on the website, it looks like it's a really dark blush. When I got it home, I was shocked at how different it looks in person. So just be aware of that. If you see a really dark blush on the website, that's not what it looks like. But I just think these are so natural looking and they're also incredible incredibly long lasting for a powder blush as well. So these are wonderful. And also just one more quick mention from Clinique, we have the High Impact Hi-Fi Full Volume Mascara. So this was a shock to me because the other Clinique mascaras I've tried in the past gave me um, not like the false lash look that I was going for, they're more natural looking. This one, oh my gosh, it gives me the hugest lashes ever. So the brush has kind of like a cone shape, 
If you want like that full glam, really, really false lash type of look, definitely try this. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I don't wear it as often as I do my tubing formulas because it's a little bit trickier to remove and I think the tubing ones are just so easy. I've gotten used to those. But for those times that I want really, really huge lashes, I think this is amazing. It's such a good one. Next up, we have the brand Color Wow, and they're probably best known for their Dream Coat spray, which I haven't actually tried before, but it's supposed to be an anti-frizz spray that kind of like seals up your hair and prevents frizz like for a couple of days, I think, are the claims. I haven't tried that, but I did recently get this. This is their Money Mist. I saw it on the Sephora website and I ordered it right away. It sounded good. It says it's a luxe light leave-in conditioner for glossy, expensive looking hair. So it was just something that I wanted to try. It also says that it has amino acids in the formula to kind of help give your hair more elasticity. And I, I am prone to breakage because I have dry hair and I bleach it. So I'm always looking for things that are gonna be really hydrating. And so far I like this. I haven't tried it that much. It was like maybe two times I've used it so far. And I definitely like how lightweight it is. Like it has a thin spray. It's not one of those leave-in conditioners that has like a thicker, almost lotion-like texture. It's very thin and serum-like, so I like the way it feels. It also smells incredible, and the two times that I used it, I didn't feel like it weighed my hair down and my hair felt super soft. So I give it a thumbs up so far. I'm gonna have to keep playing with it, but that's the only product I've tried from ColorWow, so I just wanted to mention it. All right, moving on to D. I feel like we have such a long way to go. Oh my gosh, we're gonna be here a while. We have Danessa Myricks. So this is another brand I haven't tried too many things from, but I did wanna mention her Yummy Skin Cream Blush. So I have mine in the shade Rose and Brunch. And I really like this formula a lot. I think it's a nice soft texture. It dries right to that powdery finish. And this color is the prettiest pop of kind of like a rose color. So let me just show you what it looks like. It's super pretty and I feel like it blends out really nicely on your skin. It doesn't lift up your foundation underneath because it dries right to the powder. It almost has a moussey texture similar to something like the ColourPop Super Shock Cheeks, but it's maybe just slightly thinner than those. Those have a little bit more of that putty texture and this one feels a little bit creamier, but I love these. I think they're phenomenal. Also just quickly, I haven't reviewed this yet and I've only tried it once, so I don't have like a solid opinion on it, but I wanted to mention it. She has the new Groundwork Blooming Romance palette, and this is supposed to be an all-in-one palette, so you can use these colors on face and lips and cheeks, so everything. You have cream shades in the larger pans, and then the smaller pans are powders. And I just thought that these colors looked so pretty. Everything is matte, but I like the idea of one palette to do your entire face. She said you can also like dip into some of these cream shades down here or powders and use them for your brows. Some of these creams, they're a little bit more sheer than they look in the pan. You could probably even use them as like bronzer or contour. So you can really do a lot with this. But again, I just tried it one time, just playing with it quickly. So I don't really have a full opinion on it. So far, I felt like though everything blended really really seamlessly. The creams are really easy to blend out, the powders as well. So I just wanted to quickly mention that as something new. Next we have Dermalogica. This is another brand I really haven't tried much from. So if you have some suggestions for me, definitely let me know. But there is one product that I have been trying from them and it's their Pro Collagen Banking Serum. So this is supposed to preserve the collagen that you have in your skin and prevent it from breaking down. And it also is supposed to plump your skin. And I definitely noticed the plumping aspect when I put this on. It has a really, really nice texture so I'll show you what it looks like quickly. It's more of a thick serum, so it almost has a little bit of a lotiony texture. And when you put it on, I don't know if you'll even be able to tell on my hand, but it makes your skin feel like silk. And I noticed that on days when I wear this, my skin just looks a little more plumped up. Makeup goes on really smoothly on top of it. So I am enjoying it so far, but I can't really speak to any kind of anti-aging aspects because I haven't been using it that long, but I'm definitely gonna keep using it because I love the way that it makes my skin look and feel. Next up we have Dior, and Dior is a brand that 
you know, I used to use them a lot back in the day. Again, like 20 years ago, I worked at Sephora. I used to love their foundation spray, like the mist. That was amazing. I also used to use the Dior Show Mascara. I know that that's still around, but the last time I tried it, I had horrible smudges underneath my eyes. So um, I don't really recommend that. I have the Rosy Glow Blush, but it's not my favorite blush formula, to be honest. It gets hard pan and then it becomes super difficult to pick up. And it's also just one of those blushes that's so light. I feel like I have to layer it and layer it a million times. And I also have their lip oil, but to be honest with you, I like the Clarins one better. So I just, I was really struggling with Dior. I was trying to come up with something that I really love that I feel like it's worth buying and I couldn't really come up with something. So that doesn't mean that there's nothing worth buying from the line. There are a lot of things that I haven't tried. So if you have some Dior favorites, let us know what they are down in the comments. But I was just kind of going over all the things that I have tried and I just feel like they're okay, but they're not my absolute favorites. So there was nothing that I was truly excited about, like ready to come on here and share with you guys. Next we have Dr. Idris and she is one of my favorite YouTubers. She has a skincare channel, definitely go and check her out. She's amazing. And she has a, her own skincare line now, which I really want to try. I might actually pick something up during the Sephora sale. I'm just kind of waiting for that. But I just wanted to mention it. I was so excited for her when I saw her products in Sephora. I know she's had the skincare line for a while, but getting into Sephora is like a huge deal. So really, really happy for her. Um, next up is Drunk Elephant. And this is another brand that I've tried a lot of their products and I just, I don't know, I'm not like super thrilled or enthused with most everything that I tried. I felt like it was okay, but super expensive for what you're getting, like what they're charging for 100% virgin marula oil when you can get that pretty much anywhere for a fraction of the price. I don't know, I could be in the minority here, but this brand just kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit. So I don't have anything to really recommend from them. I've been using a lot of K-Beauty skincare lately, and I just find that the quality is so good and it's a lot less expensive. So I'm sorry I don't have any Drunk Elephant recommendations. Next we have Dry Bar, and Dry Bar, I think I've mentioned this in a couple of videos in the past, their Prep Rally Spray is my favorite leave-in conditioner. If you have fine hair and you don't want it to be weighed down, but you need that extra conditioning, this is amazing. I love this stuff, especially if you want like more of a bouncy blowout. This is so good. This is the coconut colada one. I also have the one that in the pink bottle, it's the same formula, but just a different fragrance. I don't know. That one has a little bit more of like a spa like scent to it. And I really like that too. It's something unique and different though. So probably smell it first if you're in store before you buy it. This one just smells like coconut, like the beach. So anyway, if you have fine hair and you're looking for a leave-in, definitely try this. It also protects your hair up to 450. So this stuff is great. The next brand is Dyson. So they're famous for their air wrap. And to be honest, I put off getting this for a really long time. I think it's $600. So definitely not cheap, but I had a whole bunch of gift cards that I had saved up like from Mother's Day, my birthday. And at one point, I think I had like $400 worth of gift cards. And I'm like, you know, I'm never going to like outright spend all the cash on this. So rather than buy like a whole bunch of things, I'm just gonna treat myself. I'm gonna try this, see what it's all about. About. I know there are some dupes out there and I can't really speak to those, but they are a lot less money. So if you're just absolutely not willing to spend $5.99 on something like this, it might be worth picking up one of the dupes because I just find this to be the coolest product. So it has several different functions. First up, it's a blow dryer. And I like how kind of slim and sleek it is. It doesn't have that traditional blow dryer shape. It's just like a wand. So it took a little bit of getting used to, but I love it and it's super powerful. So it gets my hair dry dry really, really quickly. And I usually just use the blow dryer until it's about 85, 90% dry. And then I'll switch to one of the attachments. So they're super easy to just pop on and off and they have a straight brush. So if you wanna just kind of brush through your hair and get it nice and sleek and straight, I do this and I find that I don't even really need to use my flat iron because it just makes my hair really super smooth. They also have a round brush with the bristles on it. And I like to use this on my bangs, which are a little bit shorter. They're more like the length of my chin. So I use this to kind of add a little bit of curl and bend to those. I don't use this on the rest of my hair though because my hair's long and it kind of gets tangled in the brush. 
And then they also have two different curling wand options. So there's a really skinny one. I like to use the bigger one, which I think is equivalent to like a one inch curling iron, but it's so cool. All you have to do is kind of put it up to the piece of hair and your hair just like sucks itself right up to it. You don't have to wrap your hair around the barrel like a curling iron. And it's great because it's drying my hair at the same time as it's curling it. And it gives me these really big bouncy curls. So I love using this. It's such a cool product. And again, if you're going traveling and stuff, you can just take this one kit instead of, you know, your curling iron, your flat iron, your blow dryer. It's just kind of all in one. So it's really nice. Next up, we have the brand Elemis. And this is another brand I haven't tried too many things from. I've tried their cleansing balm and one of their moisturizers. But the reason that I don't really use them anymore is just because they're so heavily fragranced. And I'm not somebody who really minds fragrance in skincare products. I know some people stay away from it and that's fine, but I could either take it or leave it. I don't really mind one way or the other, but the Elemis products are just over the top, super, super fragranced, and I just couldn't get past it. So even if the formulas are good, I just don't recommend them for that reason alone. Next up, when it comes to Estee Lauder, I noticed that Sephora has mostly just their skincare on their site these days and not as much makeup. I think Ulta definitely has like a bigger selection, but they do have a couple of complexion products. And I would say my favorite is probably the Double Wear Foundation. This is a product that I had heard so many rave reviews about, but then there were also people saying that it was super drying so I avoided it for many years because I just didn't know how I would get along with it with my dry skin. But I have to say this does create a very, very flawless canvas. As long as you prep your skin well ahead of time, you make sure you're really moisturized. And I also apply it with a damp beauty sponge. And I find that just doing those things helps this to look so good. And it really is such a long wearing foundation. So I like this anytime that I'm gonna be somewhere for a long time, if I have an event to go to, a wedding, or if I'm just gonna be out all day and I wanna make sure my makeup lasts. So I have it in the shade Ecru and it's actually kind of hard to see because it really is such a good match for my skin. It has a little bit of that cooler undertone. And I also love how thin and weightless this feels. So especially heading into the summer months when my skin goes from being really dry to close closer to normal, this is amazing. And it's something that really lasts through the summer heat and it doesn't break down easily. So I think this is a great product and I'm so glad that I finally tried it. Next up is a hair care brand called Fable and Main. And I've only tried one product from them and this is the detangling leave-in conditioner. This one, I felt like it was just okay, but definitely not my favorite. So I'm just gonna spray a little bit into my hand. As you can see for a leave-in conditioner, it's a little bit thicker, so it almost feels like a lotion. And I just felt like it was kind of heavy for my hair, like the Color Wow Mist or the Dry Bar are just so much thinner formulas. I think it was just too much. I kind of felt like I had a little bit of like a residue on my hair throughout the day. So it could just be something that might work better for somebody who has thicker or coarser hair than I do. But I have to say it smells amazing. It has this really nice herbal scent that I really like. Next up, when it comes to Fenty, there are several products that I think are really good in their line, but the things that I am like the most excited about are actually from the Fenty Skin line. So I wanna talk about two of those really quickly. First up is the Plush Puddin Lip Balm. So I have the Barbados Cherry one and the original. I don't know if this was just like a holiday edition or if they still have it, but the original one is awesome too. So it comes in this little container and it has a twist up on the bottom. So I'll just show you, like wait until you see how thick this is. It is so luxurious. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the old Bite Beauty Agave lip mask. And I'm talking about the original one, not the reformulated one. So this is just so thick and rich. It's really hard to tell just on camera, but it's the ultimate lip mask. Like forget the Laneige one. This is so much more nourishing if you have dry lips and it has the most delicious scent. And when you wake up in the morning, you still feel it on your lips. Like it does not budge. Also had to mention their body butter. So I have the original one and then I have the cinnamon one. This is called warm cinnamon. To me, it smells like cinnamon and sugar. It is 
heaven. It's a super thick, rich body butter. Again, it feels so incredible if you have really dry skin. It just puts all the hydration right back in and it feels so good. It gives your skin a little bit of a glow. So this one honestly smells good enough to eat. It smells like French toast with the maple syrup on it. Like it's incredible. And then the original one is a little bit of a softer scent. It's like a really soft floral, but it also has some warmth to it. Like it might even have a little bit of vanilla. I don't normally like floral. I like sweeter gourmand scents, but I actually love this. And like I said, it is just so soft and subtle. It's not gonna overpower anything. So if you wear perfume, you could probably wear this and then still wear your perfume. It's not gonna compete with it. But definitely when it comes to Fenty, these are the things that I am definitely most excited about. All right, so I did it again. I skipped one, I skipped pharmacy. So that was in between Fable and Maine and Fenty. So Pharmacy, I don't have any of their skincare at the moment, but I would recommend their Green Clean Cleansing Balm. I think it's a really good cleansing balm. It's not a particularly greasy formula, so I find that it rinses away pretty clean, but at the same time, it gets all of your makeup off. So I do really like that formula. I think it's worth trying for sure. Then when it comes to First Aid Beauty, my favorite product is definitely the KP Bump Eraser Body Scrub. So I've used this one almost all the way down to the bottom. This is my second tube, and it is just a really intense body scrub. So if you have more sensitive skin, I don't know if this one will necessarily be for you or you might just wanna use it like on your feet, knees and elbows kind of thing, but this has ground up pumice in it to physically exfoliate and it also has 10% alpha hydroxy acid to chemically exfoliate. So it's like a one-two punch. It gets rid of all of those bumps that are on the backs of your arms or on your legs and it really does a fantastic job at making your skin super smooth. So this is a great one to check out, especially if you self tan and you can't use an exfoliator that has oil in the formula, so many body scrubs are full of the oils, which are great, like they hydrate your skin, but if you need something that's gonna rinse away clean and not leave a film on your skin, then this is awesome for that. Okay, so when it comes to the brand Fresh, there are two products that I think are phenomenal and they're both from the Rose line. So the first one is the Rose Deep Hydration Oil Infused Serum. So this is one of those dual phase products that has like the oil layer that's floating on top. You're just supposed to shake it together. And I actually use this as a toner, even though it's called serum, I feel like it's just got that watery texture of a toner. So I apply this after cleansing my face and it is the most hydrating toner ever. So there have been a lot of hydrating toners that I've used in the past, but hopefully you can see like with this one, that oil layer is just so nourishing. It makes my skin feel incredible. Like in the dead of winter, this is the one that I use the most often, especially at night before I'm going to sleep because it's just incredibly hydrating. And also the deep hydration cream is incredible. I just purchased a new jar of this very recently and it has this really thick cushiony buttery texture that is just so nice. It's super comforting. Like when your skin feels really dry and tight, this just feels so good. It does smell like rose and the toner does as well. So these are some of my favorite products for dry skin. I mean, you can see like I put them on this hand and this hand has nothing. And this one just looks so much more nourished and plumped up and hydrated. So they're definitely on the pricey side, but worth it for sure. Next up for the letter G, we have the Gisu Honey Hair Oil. This is the only product that I've tried from this line and I didn't love it. I felt like this was greasy. It made my hair look kind of weighted down even though I only used a tiny little bit of it. So I bought this months ago and as you can see, like it's almost full to the top because I just used it a couple of times and I wasn't super impressed with it. So this is the only product that I've tried from this brand, but I just didn't really get all the hype from it. I mean, it does have a cute little glass bottle, but that's about it. Next up we have Givenchy. I haven't tried a lot from this brand either, but I do have have their Prism Libre powder. I really love that, I think it's awesome, but Moira has a really good dupe for it that I think is so close that I wouldn't necessarily recommend spending all the extra money on it if you can get it from Moira. But one thing that I do really enjoy from them is the Prism Libre blushes. So I have one that's more of a cool tone pink, which is shade one, and then a peachy one, which is shade three. And these are loose powder blushes, which you don't really see too much nowadays, but I think these are some of the softest, silkiest blush. And I remember being wowed the first time I tried these when I put them on in a video, because it hardly even looks like you're wearing blush. This powder just 
melts right into your skin and it doesn't look like you have powder on at all. It just looks like the color is kind of coming from within, but these colors are extremely subtle. So we have shade three up on the top and then shade one on the bottom. And it's crazy how seamless these go on. They almost look like they just kind of stain your cheeks. The color is just so fine. It just kind of becomes one with your skin. It's so nice. So I really enjoy the texture of these. They're just something unique and different and interesting. Next from Glossier, I've really been loving their Cloud Paint Bronzer. I did have two shades of the Cloud Paint Blush and I love those two. I think they're a great formula, but I had to declutter them because they were a couple years old and I just felt like they were probably expired. But I recently tried this in the shade Sail, and not only do I love the color, but I find this to be super easy to work with. When I first tried this on in a video a couple of weeks ago, I was really just blown away by how seamless it is, and I love this color too. Again, this is the shade Sail. I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, it's like the perfect color for me. It has a little bit of a cooler undertone, and when I blended this in with a brush, it just gave me the most seamless bronze look. It doesn't look muddy. It just warmed up my skin in a really subtle way that was just gorgeous. So I definitely recommend the Cloud Paint Bronzer. I haven't tried much from Glossier, so again, if there's something that you can recommend, definitely let me know. Next up from Glow Recipe, I did have really good luck with the Watermelon Overnight AHA mask. I felt like I woke up in the morning, my skin was baby smooth. It really is a nice exfoliating mask. So I really like that one. I used it up and I don't have it anymore, but I just wanted to mention that. And also I really like their Niacinamide Dew Drops. That is just such a beautiful serum. It's really like a plumping serum. It makes your skin look nice and dewy and juicy. So I like that one. And I recently got the Niacinamide Hue Drops, which have a little bit of bronze in them. And I did like the glow that this gave my skin, but I just was a little bit confused by it because I felt like if you're putting on a product like this, this is basically a serum that you're gonna use during your skincare. But even if you're gonna use it as a primer, chances are you're gonna cover this up with foundation. So I don't know how much of this color is really gonna show through unless you're just using this as your base product. Like if you put this on after skincare and you're just using this as kind of like an all over bronze tint, or I suppose you could mix in a couple drops with your foundation to help give it a little bit of a deeper color and give you more of a bronze glow. So you can do that as well. I'm still kind of playing with this product and trying to figure out the best way to use it, but I do like how much it plumps up my skin and makes it look really dewy, kind of like the original one. So I just wanted to mention this too, but so far I think the original one is a little bit better. I use that one more often than this, but I figured I might get some questions about this. So I just wanted to let you know. And also color wise, I'll show you what it looks like just compared to nothing. So this is the hand I put the drops on and this is without. So it just gives you a tiny little color boost, but nothing too dramatic. Next up we have Grande Lash Grande Brow. So I have tried Grande Lash. I didn't like it. It's one of those formulas that has the prostaglandins in it. So it had a lot of side effects for me, particularly irritating the heck out of my eyes. Like my whole lash line was red all the time. It was itchy. So I stopped using that, but the brow one is really good. And I can definitely attest to the results that it had. After a few months, I noticed my brows getting much thicker and fuller. So it does really work. And I didn't have any issues or side effects using the brow one. So that's one that I think is definitely worth it if you wanna to try to grow your brows in a little bit more. All right, next for Gucci, you probably know what I'm gonna say. It's the Gucci bronzer. So this one in the shade Fair is my all-time favorite bronzer. I have a lot that I really like, but this one, the color is just so perfect for me. It has that little bit of a rosy undertone and it gives me that same exact color that I would naturally turn in the sun. It is just gorgeous. And the formula is just also really super smooth. It doesn't get muddy. So I really love it. Although I will admit this is the only product from Gucci that I've tried. So if there's something else that you've tried that you really like, let us know down below. Next up from the brand Give, I really love their Feel and Cheeky duos. So these are blush duos. Um, I have two shades. I have Ex-Girlfriend, which has the really cool tone pinks. And then I also have Stars Aligned, which are nudes, and these are a little bit warmer. So what I love about these is that they have a slightly glowy shade on the top, 
and then a matte shade on the bottom. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You can mix the two together, wear them separately. I've done both. And I also don't feel like the shimmery shades are super shimmery. They give more of I would say like a satiny finish. They're not a flat matte, but they also don't have a ton of glow either. So they're not like those blush lighter type of deals. So here we have ex-girlfriend on the top and then we have stars aligned on the bottom. I love both. I wear both very often. And again, I think it's a super nice blush formula. Definitely worth checking out. And I also just quickly want to mention the lip gloss from Give because I don't hear anybody talking about this, but it's such a nice formula. And this particular shade Candy is one of my favorites because it's kind of like a lavender pink. And I think this is more of a unique color and just one that you don't really see very often. And also this is the type of gloss that is a little bit thicker and stickier. So if you don't like a sticky gloss, you're probably not gonna like this, but I love it because it really lasts a long time and it kind of grips to your lips. And it also smells amazing, like a vanilla cupcake. It's so good. Next up, House Labs also has some amazing products, but I would say my favorite is probably their blushes. These are so, so nice. And again, I have two shades. I have Dragon Fruit Days, which is that really bright hot pink. And then I have Hibiscus Haze, which is also pink, but it's like a little bit of a warmer pink, almost bordering on peachy. So this formula is ultra smooth. They say that it has fermented Arnica in it. So it kind of has like a little bit of skincare in there. I just love how smoothly these apply to your cheeks. They're just beautiful. So again, we have Hibiscus up here on the top and then Dragon Fruit on the bottom. Bottom. And these are just so, so, so pretty. And I also recently tried the House Labs plumping glazes, and I think these are really nice too. They're supposed to be like a plumping lip gloss, but they don't tingle or burn or sting or anything like that. So I think they are more of a plumping over time type of thing. And they plump in a way because they're giving your lips a ton of hydration. And this is my favorite kind of lip plumper, honestly. I don't notice like a huge, you know, like my lips don't blow up when I wear them, but because I have so many lines in my lips, I love that these kind of fill them in and make them look a little bit smoother. So I have the shades Praline on top and then Macaron on the bottom. So kind of like a pretty nude shade and then a cooler tone pink. Moving on from Hourglass, my number one favorite product from them would have to be their Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. So this is a tubing formula and one of you guys actually had suggested it to me and I just love it. It has a really nice skinny wand, so it gets right up to the roots of your lashes and it doesn't clump, it doesn't smudge or flake under your eyes. Because it's a tubing formula, it just rinses away with water. You don't even need cleanser and the tubes just kind of slide off your lashes. And it gives me so much length and volume. I really love it. Just give it a couple of days though, when you first get it. I know for me, I wasn't like super impressed with the length and volume the first time I used it. And I think it just is one of those things with mascaras where they don't always like wow me the first use, but then after it dries out just a little bit, it's fantastic. That's kind of how this was for me. And I've held on to this way longer than I should have. So it's probably time for a new one. Next up, when it comes to Huda Beauty, I would say my favorite product Product from her is her palettes. I think those are the thing that stand out to me the most. Unfortunately, Sephora has discontinued so many of them now that there really only are a couple left. So the two that are left at Sephora that I really like are Rose Quartz, which is probably my favorite. This one has these gorgeous cool tones. It's a really soft and beautiful color story. If you have a skin tone similar to mine, especially, I think this is super, super flattering. There are a lot of dual chrome shades in here too. So just some really fun and interesting colors. And then if you're more into neutrals, the Pretty Grunge palette is also super nice. This one goes a little bit deeper and smokier overall, but you do have some lighter shades to play with and it's a mix of cool tone shades and warm tones as well. So it's kind of just like a really nice, easy to wear neutral palette. Next up, when it comes to Ilia, I haven't tried too many things from this brand in the past, but I just got two of their newer products that I'm really excited about and I've really been loving. So the first one is the face base, or I'm sorry, the base face milk. Um, this is a toner. So they actually are kind of getting into skincare a little bit, I guess. And I just started using this, but I really like it. It kind of reminds me of the Laneige Cream Skin Toner, 
which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. It has a really nice hydrating, it has a super nice hydrating kind of plumping formula. So I put this on after cleansing and I usually put it on in a couple of layers just to really flood my skin with moisture. I love it. I think it's a great first layer to put under serums and then moisturizer. So if you're somebody who doesn't want like the oil in a toner, like the fresh one that I showed earlier, this one is just a really nice light creamy formula. So it's really good. And also their Skin Rewind foundation stick. I've really been enjoying this a lot. I don't normally love foundation sticks on my skin because I feel like they can be heavy and kind of cakey and thick but this one has a melting quality where it just kind of melts into your skin and it's a little bit thinner than most other foundation sticks and it also is loaded with a ton of skincare. I don't know about all the skincare claims, I haven't really been using this long enough, but I will say that it's one of the most flattering foundation sticks that I've tried and it has, I would say like a light to medium coverage, but it's just really quick and easy on those days when you just wanna kind of draw your foundation on really quick, blend it and go. So I'm definitely enjoying this. I think if you have dry or more mature skin and you've stayed away from foundation sticks in the past, you'll really like this one. Next, when it comes to In Beauty Project, I know a lot of people talk about their lip glazes. This is probably their most popular product. And these are really nice. I have a couple of different colors and they have a nice formula that reminds me more of a lip gloss than like a lip oil. But I find these to be super similar to the NYX fat lip oils. And I kind of feel like NYX was maybe trying to dupe these because they are so super close. Personally, my favorite thing from In Beauty Project is their Body Bright and Smooth Serum. So this is a body serum. You can use it as a moisturizer because I find it to be pretty thick and rich, or you can use it underneath your body lotion. For me, if it's the winter time, I usually will put something on top of this, but last summer when I first started using this, I felt like I could just use it alone and I had enough moisture. So it has this really thick, cushiony texture that I wasn't expecting from a body serum. I was expecting it to be a lot thinner, but this has so many great ingredients. It has 7% alpha hydroxy and beta hydroxy. So it helps to get rid of any rough or bumpy skin. And it also has a vitamin C and it has tranexamic acid to help fade discoloration. So it's like a whole skincare serum for your body. And again, I feel like this formula is so like plumping. It just makes your skin look so nice and really feel velvety smooth and soft. So this is a product I don't hear anybody talking about, but it has such great ingredients in it and it's just an amazing treatment for your body. Next we have It Cosmetics and definitely by far my favorite product is the CC Nude Glow. So I used to be a fan of the original CC Cream, but as the years went by, I started to feel like it looked a little too thick and heavy and makeup-y on my skin. And when they came out with this lighter version, I tried it and fell in love with it. It's not quite as full color coverage as the original, but it's a little bit more glowy, it's thinner and just lighter weight overall. And it's nice that it has the SPF in there too. So I like to wear this a lot in the summer. It just gives you some added protection. And I have it in the shade Fair Light. It's just slightly dark for me, but it works because it's a little bit more sheer. So if you feel like the original CC cream is too thick for you, definitely try this one because I think you'll really enjoy it. It's just such a nice, like it's like a tinted moisturizer, but with a little bit more coverage than a normal tinted moisturizer would have. So this is great. Next we have K18 and I have to say right off the bat, I recommend every single thing from this line. If you have damaged hair, if you color treat your hair, if you bleach especially and you experience any kind of breakage, this product actually is supposed to repair your hair, like the broken bonds that are in there. This is not something that could be done in the past. Usually they would say hair care products just kind of temporarily coat your hair and make it look better. You can't actually reverse damage. But in this case, Olaplex also is the same way, but I prefer K18. I've just had better results with this than Olaplex. I find that after I go and get highlights, my hair just snaps back so much faster with the K18. So this is a treatment that you put in your hair after shampooing. So you, in the shower, you use shampoo, don't use conditioner. Then when you get out of the shower and your hair is towel dried, 
you put this on you know all through your hair let it sit for four minutes and do its thing and then you can go and style and do whatever else you want to do so i used to use this like every other wash for a while right after i had my hair highlighted and now i just use it once a week maybe once every two weeks just for maintenance so you don't have to continue using it all the time but if your hair is in particularly bad shape then you want to use it more frequently but since I got the treatment, I've also tried the hair oil, which is so beautiful. This is another like super lightweight oil that doesn't weigh your hair down and it makes it look so soft and smooth. So I really love this and it has a little bit of that K18 in it. So it's treating your hair at the same time. You can put this on wet hair before you blow dry or you can use it as like a finishing serum. And I also just recently got the shampoo and conditioner and I've been loving these too. I think they do a great job at um, cleaning my hair and moisturizing without weighing it down. So, so far so good with these as well. And then next we have Kaja. So I really like their new Wink Dazzle sticks. These are so cute and I've talked about these in a couple of videos already, but they're basically an eyeshadow crayon on one side and then on the other side, they have a loose eyeshadow with a little sponge tip applicator. So you can just kind of dip it in this little well right here. So when I first tried these, I was so impressed with how creamy they are. Like when you draw them on, they just are effortless. You don't even have to press and they give you a ton of pigment. They blend really easily on the skin as well. And then on the other side, they have just this little bit of glitter that you can just put on top if you want. So this is the shade Petal Prism, but it comes in like so many beautiful colors. And some of the eyeshadow sticks are matte, like this one is, and some of them have a shimmer finish. So there are two different finishes to pick from, and there are more colors on the Kaja website than there are on the Sephora website, unfortunately. But I was just so impressed with these. Like I said, they last the entire day without creasing or budging. So I thought these were a really good formula and also a unique product because you have the eyeshadow stick and the glitter together. Next from Kerastase, I've tried a few of their products, but not too many because they are super Super pricey. I did try their blonde purple shampoo and conditioner and I thought they were okay but they weren't um, quite as pigmented as some other purple shampoos that I've tried and I just didn't feel like it made too much of a difference even though it made my hair feel soft. So my favorite product from Kerastase has been the Nutritive Beautifying Detangling Blow Dry Mist. So even though this is a blow dry mist it's a little bit on the heavier side for my hair type. So I feel like sometimes it can weigh my hair down a little bit. It doesn't make it feel sticky or like it has a film on it, like the Fable and Main one that I talked about. It does make my hair feel incredibly soft. It just doesn't have quite as much bounce, I think. But over the summer, I was letting my hair air dry a lot. And it was because of this product that I was actually able to do that because my hair generally looks terrible if I let it air dry because it has this coarse texture and it's a bit on the damaged side. So if I try to let it air dry, it gets all frizzy and it looks like a hot mess. But I remember one day I was on vacation and it was really hot out and I thought I'm not gonna blow dry my hair. So I just sprayed some of this in and I kind of scrunched it a little bit and I left it alone. And I was pleasantly surprised the next time I looked in the mirror that my hair had like a nice wave to it, but it wasn't frizzy. So I think something that's a little bit heavier like this, while it's not the best if I'm gonna blow dry and like if I want a bouncy blowout, but the heaviness and the richness of it helped to prevent my hair from becoming frizzy when I air dried. So I actually love this for that purpose, but if you have thicker hair, I think it would work really well for blow drying as well. Next up we have Kosas and similar to Dior, I feel like there's nothing that I've really tried from this brand that I could honestly say wowed me or like blew me away. I haven't tried their foundation and I know a lot of people really liked it, but the concealer that went viral, the cloud powder, I think it was called, or the cloud set, they were okay, but I didn't feel like they were what everybody was raving about. At least that was just my personal experience. Obviously, you know, some of you might love them, but I don't know, maybe I haven't tried enough things. Maybe there are some great things out there. You'll have to let us know down below, but I just don't have any recommendations from Kosas, unfortunately. Next, um, L'Occitane. 
This is another brand that I haven't tried a lot of things from, but one thing that I do really love is their almond shower oil. I don't have it at the moment, but I've used it in the past many times and it has such a heavenly smell, first of all. It's that gorgeous almond scent. And I love just the idea of a shower oil because they're so hydrating, yet at the same time, it does foam up and get you clean. So now that I'm talking about it, it kind of makes me wanna buy a new bottle of it. It's a really nice product, again, if you have dry skin, in. It's just an overall really nice shower experience. Also, when it comes to Lancome, many of you who watch my channel know that I recently tried their foundation stick and I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, they don't have it at Sephora, only at Ulta. And Sephora in general doesn't carry a huge range of Lancome. They have a lot of their skincare, but they mostly have the mascaras and just a couple little odds and ends. So if I had to pick one thing, it would probably be the Juicy Tubes. And these made a comeback a couple of years ago, but they're originally from, was it the 90s or the late 90s, I think they first came out. For me, these just have so much nostalgia. They're a pretty thick and sticky gloss, but again, there's a time and place where I really love those. And I think if you want your gloss to hold on and last longer, then you definitely want a formula like this because they really do grab on and they stay for quite a while and they keep the moisture locked in on your lips. So I really like these. They come in really fun fruit flavors. So I definitely think these are great. Next from Laneige, I really like their Cream Skin Toner. This is another really hydrating formula, kind of similar to the Ilia, but I think this one is a little thinner. So if you have drier skin, I would go with the Ilia. If you just have more normal to dry skin, then I would check this one out. But again, I love using a hydrating toner after cleansing because I feel like it's just a nice light layer to put on before your serum and your moisturizer. And this does that. This has ceramides and peptides in it. So it also has some anti-aging and barrier benefits as well. Next from Laura Mercier, I've tried quite a few of her products. Her caviar eyeshadow sticks are incredible. They're one of my favorite eyeshadow stick formulas. Her new foundation is also really nice. It's a super lightweight serum formula and I felt like it looked really nice on my skin, but my favorite product is probably her blushes. So these are the blush color infusion. I have two different shades, chai and strawberry. So chai is like the prettiest dusty nude and then strawberry is a soft pink. And these have such a soft, silky texture. Again, they're a kind of blush that doesn't really look like powder sitting on your skin. They just melt in and they're incredibly seamless. So we have chai up here and then strawberry down here. All right, guys, so I am gonna take a quick pause. I'm just looking at my list and I see that we're only about halfway through. We're on L and we have a lot more to go. I have to pick up my son from school. I spent most of the day gathering up all these products and filming now. So I'm likely not gonna have any more time when I get home because we have to get into homework and dinner and all of that. So I'm gonna pick this up again tomorrow. So next time you see me, I'll have different hair and makeup and outfit. So I will see you guys then. Hey guys, we're back for day two, so let's get straight into it. First, we have the brand Lawless. So Lawless is actually one of my favorite brands when it comes to lip products. I think their lip products are definitely a standout for me when it comes to this brand. So my favorite, I think by far, would be the Forget the Filler lip plumping gloss. This is the only lip plumper that I actually like that doesn't sting or burn. It has a very, very mild tingle, but it's just for a couple minutes. It's nothing uncomfortable. And let's be real, it doesn't give you the look of actual lip fillers like the name says, but it does smooth out my lip lines and make everything just look a lot better. They also have a lip mask at night that's really nice, and they have plumping lip balms and lipsticks, but I think the glosses are my favorite. I'm actually wearing the maple sugar one today. So it's kind of like a sheer brown. I'll just swatch them for you really quickly. They all smell amazing. The cherry vanilla one especially is super nostalgic. It smells like something from the 80s. I can't place exactly what it is, but this is like my childhood in a tube right here. It might be like one of those Bonnie Bell lip smackers or something that I had back then. It just smells heavenly and these come in a really, really huge range of colors as well. So here are the shades that I have at the moment. We have Lavender Sorbet, which is a really beautiful one. Even though it's purple, it really just looks like a cool tone pink on my lips. We have Nudie, which is a gorgeous nude. Then the Maple Sugar shade that I'm wearing today 
and the cherry vanilla. So these are all really gorgeous. So if you're looking for more of a mild lip plumper, I think these are so good. And the other thing from Lawless that I use constantly is their lip liner and it's in the shade Pink Slip. So this is just color specific. I don't feel like their lip liners are anything to write home about as far as like that they're different than drugstore lip liners because for me, I feel like there's so many good formulas at the drugstore. You really don't need to spend a lot on lip liner. It's one of those things that I think you can get really good ones very cheaply. But this color is one that I haven't been able to find at the drugstore and it's the perfect like dusty cool tone pink. So every time I wanna wear cool tone lips, this is the one that I go for. And I have tried so many different drugstore ones and I cannot match this. I've come kinda close, but everything is just a little bit warmer than this one. So if you're looking for the perfect cool tone lip liner that's not like too hot pink, it's just the perfect kind of mauvey, mauvey tone. This one is amazing. Next up, we have the brand Living Proof. This is one of my favorite hair care brands. I really love how they're very science oriented and they have unique solutions to fixing different hair problems. My favorite personally is the Perfect Hair Day Shampoo and Conditioner. This duo right here, every time I use it, I have a good hair day and I don't have them currently because I'm trying to work through other stuff, but I definitely want to go back and repurchase them. My only gripe is that the packaging sucks. Like these bottles, when you try to squeeze them, they are so hard to squeeze and get the product out. So I'm constantly having to like shake them in the shower. I really wish they would change that, but I know Ulta has like bigger sizes with a pump. So I may just do that next time. I think it'll be a little easier. Sephora doesn't seem to have the bigger sizes though, which is a bummer. But for me, these are like the Goldilocks of shampoo and conditioner because they're not too light. They're not too heavy. They're just a perfect amount of moisture that doesn't weigh my hair down and just makes everything look amazing. So I'm definitely gonna be repurchasing these at some point. Next up, we have the brand LYS and I haven't tried too many things from this brand. So if there are other good things I should try, let me know. The main things that I have tried are the cream blushes, the little triangle ones, which I love. These are incredible. But I think my new favorite from them is their blush stick. And I think this is basically the same formula that's in the little compacts. It's just in stick form and I prefer it because they're just a little bit more user friendly. And these are the smoothest, silkiest cream blushes, yet they have a ton of pigmentation. You can either swipe it on your cheek and then blend, or you can like take a brush and take it right from the tube. I've done it both ways. And even though they're super creamy and emollient, they also dry down all the way to a powder finish. So I don't find that they disturb your foundation underneath. They're not like that sticky blush sitting on your cheeks, which I really love. And the colors that they come in are so saturated and just so beautiful. So I have the shades Bubbly on top. Then this one is Elite. And then on the bottom, we have Focused. Aren't these so beautiful? So I know these are kind of a new release for them. And if you've had your eye on them, the sale would definitely be a great time to get one. Moving on, we have Makeup Forever. So Makeup Forever is kind of a brand that I ignored for a really long time because they just weren't super exciting. And they put me on their PR list a while back and they started sending me products. And once I actually had them home and I started playing with everything, I was really, really impressed. They're a makeup artist brand and they're kind of like no frills, no fuss, but the products are just incredible quality. So there are a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. I couldn't really just pick one. Um, so first of all, they have a new foundation and it's the HD Skin Hydra Glow. So their original HD Skin foundation was already a favorite of mine. It had perfect medium coverage, kind of like a satiny finish, and it was really nice on my skin. But this just takes it up another level for dry skin. It's incredible. This basically feels like a moisturizer going on, yet it has really good coverage. I would say it's like, again, about medium. I'm actually wearing it today. I was wearing it yesterday in the video as well. It's just the most comfortable foundation ever. So if you have dry skin and you're always worried about your foundation looking like dry or makeup-y, clinging to dry patches, this does not do that. It literally sits like a moisturizer on your skin and it feels so nice. I have mine in the shade 1R12, which is a cooler undertone. I think the R stands for red. Um, and it's pretty close. I would say it's a decent match. That's the color that I usually am in their products. So I just love this. And 
on at least my dry skin, it doesn't feel greasy. Those of you who are oily may wanna try just the original HD skin because this one might be too much hydration, but if you're dry, it's not gonna be greasy. It just kind of soaks right in. So that's product number one. Number two would be their artist pencils. So these are pencils you can use basically anywhere on your face. You can use them as eyeliners, brow pencils, lip liners, whatever you want. And I use these two as lip liners all the time. So I have the shades Anywhere Caffeine and Wherever Walnut. So Anywhere Caffeine is the perfect nude. So if I'm wearing any kind of nude lipstick, or for example, today I have this kind of nude brown gloss on, I'm wearing Anywhere Caffeine. I put this on first and then the Lawless Gloss on top. So this is my ultimate nude pencil. And then if I'm wearing something a little bit more pink, I go with Wherever Walnut. And this one I kind of feel like goes with more warm tone pink. So here we have uh, Wherever Walnut and then Anywhere Caffeine. So these two lip liners are, like I said, they're the ones that I wear the most often with the exception of the Lawless one in Pink Slip. So let me just show you this really quick next to those two. So if I'm wearing a cool tone pink, then I'll wear the Lawless one. And you can see that it's definitely cooler than the Makeup Forever. So these three right here are just my ultimate nude lip liners. They're the ones that I wear with everything. And if you're like me and you generally wear nude or pink lipsticks and you don't go too bold very often, having these three liners in your collection, I think like basically these are the only three that I ever need or use. So I think they're worth it if you're gonna get tons of use out of them. And then another product I wanted to mention from Makeup Forever are their Artist Blushes. These are what they call a skin fusing blush and they have the smoothest texture. I know we've talked about a lot of blushes in this video already and I love all of them, but they are such a seamless blush, kind of like the Clinique ones. They don't look powdery. And like the loose powder blushes from Givenchy, these just kind of like melt into your skin and become one with it. So here are the three colors that I have. We have Limitless Berry, this one is Daring Candy, and this one is Wherever Rose. And they're all equally gorgeous. I wear all of these and they are so beautiful. Also, when it comes to Makeup Forever, I love their HD Skin Concealer. Just as an honorable mention, that is a really nice concealer too. Again, if you have dry or more mature skin, it sits so nicely. It doesn't sink into fine lines. It doesn't look dry or cakey. So just overall, I think Makeup Forever is a really slept on brand. People don't talk about them enough, in my opinion. Next up, we have Makeup by Mario. And this brand, kind of like Dior and Kosas, there's nothing that jumps out at me. Like if I'm sitting here making a video on all of my absolute favorite products. I just feel like a lot of the things I've tried from his brand are just okay. For example, I have his plumping lip balms and I feel like they're nice, but I like the Lawless ones a little bit better. The new foundation that he had come out with more recently was so glittery on me, so I wasn't a fan of that. I also have his new satin lipsticks, and while they're okay, I definitely prefer the satin lipsticks from AVH that I talked about earlier in the video, or the satin lipsticks from Hourglass. I like that formula a little more. His just feel a little bit dry. And I also tried his cream blushes that had come out more recently. Loved them until they faded on my face after about an hour of wear. So I just feel like everything that I try from his line, I'm initially really excited about it, but it just kind of lets me down in one way or another. And I don't want anybody to take this personally. If you like his products, that's awesome. If they work for you, that's great. It's just, for me, there's nothing that I can sit here and say I love it more than like any other product out there. So I don't know if that's just me, but You'll have to let me know down in the comments what you think of the Makeup by Mario brand in general. Next up, we have a skincare brand called Matter of Fact, and they also did send me some things in PR a while ago. It was a couple months ago now, and I've been using them and really liking one product in particular. I think they're all really nice, but there's one that stands out, and this is the 20% L-ascorbic acid. So this is a brightening and firming serum. First of all, the packaging. This is my favorite color on the planet, like this Tiffany blue. I'm just obsessed with anything that's this color. So when I first saw this, it drew me in. Um, and when you look at the bottle, it looks like it could be made out of cheap plastic, but it's actually super heavy. I don't know if this is like ceramic. It's something, like I said, really substantial and it's a super luxurious packaging. And when you open the cap, the pump is silver. Like it's just such a gorgeous presentation first and foremost. And also no light is getting in here at all. So the 20% ascorbic acid is gonna stay really potent. 
and I just wanna quickly read you a quote from the brand owner because I feel like it sums up this product so well. He said, when formulating with vitamin C, I knew that I had to optimize for three things, potency, stability, and a silky smooth texture. That's a tall order for this notoriously finicky ingredient, so I created a new delivery system that could dissolve high amounts of vitamin C without the use of water. So there's no water in here. The result is our high concentration, waterless, completely non-gritty formula, which I believe will redefine just how potent and pleasurable vitamin C can be. So I haven't had any irritation from it at all. So this almost has an oil texture, like a dry oil. So it's not really thick and it's not particularly greasy, at least on my dry skin. But if you're oily, you might find this a little bit too oily for you. It's beautiful though. And I feel like when I wear this, my foundation goes on so nicely because it just creates this really super smooth hydrated canvas. So I love it. It's one of my favorite vitamin C formulas that I've ever tried. I'm gonna have to use it for longer to see the actual results from it, but just from like an aesthetics perspective and the way that it feels on my skin, absolutely love this. I think it's so good. Next up we have Merit and they're another brand kind of like Makeup by Mario where I'm usually excited to try their products but then they let me down in some way or another. At least most of them do. So I have tried their cream blushes. I felt like they were a little bit greasy on me. They kind of lift up my foundation as I go to blend them and they're just super sheer so I have to layer them up a lot. Also their signature lipsticks I thought were really nice formula but after about six months or so I found that the one Ones that I had seemed to be turning or going bad. They had like a weird smell. So as one of those clean quote unquote brands, it, it gives me the vibe that maybe Merit isn't using a lot of preservatives in their line and maybe things aren't gonna last as long as they should. Also, I really, really enjoyed their bronzer stick, but the same thing happened with that. I had it for, I don't know, like eight or nine months and I opened it up and it just looked like the color looked off and something was funky with it. So I ended up having to get rid of it. So this is another brand that I really just don't have a recommendation for. I don't feel like it's worth spending the money on products that are just gonna go bad relatively quickly. Just my opinion again, but I really wanna be honest with you guys and I'm not gonna you know, recommend a product that I don't fully believe in. Next we have Milk Makeup and I've really been enjoying their Odyssey lip glosses. These are so nice and they come in some unique colors, especially this one. Milk is another brand that's been very hit or miss for me over the years. So I wouldn't say that I'm their biggest fan, but these glosses are some of the nicest ever because they're not sticky. They almost feel like a liquid lip balm going on. They're really, really nourishing. And like I said, they come in beautiful shades. So, so the two shades that I have are Work Trip, which is a really pale pink, and then Voyage, which is this stunning, blackberry color. And normally I don't wear really dark lipsticks, but when it comes to glosses, they're a little bit more sheer. So I really like this one. It's kind of more of a vampy color, but yet at the same time, it's not super bold. So I feel comfortable wearing it and it's a beautiful, cool tone. So anyway, these are great if you're looking for a non-sticky lip gloss formula that basically feels like a liquid lip balm. Next up, we have Moroccan Oil and they're also one of my favorite hair care brands. I've had really good luck with most of the products that I've tried from them, but my favorite favorite by far is their Frizz Shield Spray. So remember earlier in the video, we were talking about the Color Wow Dream Coat. This is kind of the similar concept to that. Like I said, I haven't tried the Dream Coat, but this is a super light, fine mist and you spray it all over wet hair and it just seals everything in when you go to blow dry or use hot tools and it gives you such a sleek finish. Like I mentioned earlier, I have issues with frizz now that my hair is more damaged, especially in the summertime. In the summer, it gets out of control. And I've tried every frizz product under the sun, the John Frieda frizzies, all of the frizz like serums and oils, nothing has worked as well as this. There's just something in here that I think seals up your cuticle so well that moisture is not getting in and your hair really stays in that sleek state all day. If you're like me and you have issues with frizz, try this, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Moving on to the letter N, we have NARS, and NARS has a lot of really nice products. I love their blushes. I also really love their Radiant Creamy Concealer. That's a really nice one. In general, I think their products are high quality, 
But my favorite product from them is one that I think is, again, a little bit more unique and something that you can't get with other brands. So it's their matte tinted lip balms. This is another product I don't really hear a lot of people talking about, but it's what I think of when I think of NARS because it's something so unique and different. So these are a tinted lip balm, but unlike most of the ones that have like a glossy texture when you put them on, these go on matte and they have this blurring effect on your lips. So unlike most matte lip products that make all the lines in my lips look more apparent, these actually kind of smooth over them and make them look less noticeable. So this is what I reach for when I want a matte finish. They are so comfortable to wear, they never feel dry. So the two shades that I have are Brief Encounter up here, which is more of a warm nude, and then Unrestricted, which is a pinky nude. This one's definitely my favorite shade, but they're both really beautiful. And the whole line is basically just neutrals. There's no like bright or funky colors. And I wanna say they only have five or six shades shades to begin with. A while back, Sephora Collection had duped these and they had their own version that actually came in more shades and I was so excited and then they discontinued them. So unfortunately, I'm back to having to spend the extra money on these, but I do think they're worth it because they're a unique product and basically the only matte lipstick that I feel like I can wear having dry lips. So I think you guys would really enjoy these. Moving on, we have Natasha Denona. She also has some really nice products, love her palette, for the most part. I also think her new concealer is fantastic. It's really great for dry or more mature skin. Underneath your eyes, it looks really flawless. But the product of hers that I probably use the most right now is the I Need a Nude palette. This is just kind of like the ultimate nude color story. So it does have some cool tones and some warm. So you really have a nice mix of both in here. And she also gives you a couple different kinds of shimmer shades. You have just your regular traditional ones. And then you also have some sheer toppers as well. So this is one of those palettes and I'm not saying this in a negative way at all, but when I don't really feel like being creative with color and all of that, and I just want something really basic and simple, it's just an easy go-to palette and it's something that I can just put on really quickly and I don't have to think too hard about it and it's gonna look good. So I would say at the moment, definitely my favorite Natasha Denona product. Next up we have Olaplex and Olaplex is similar to K18, which I talked about earlier in the video. They have a bond repair system that is supposed to kind of go inside your hair and repair all of the damage. And I do think it works. My stylist actually puts Olaplex inside the highlighting stuff when she puts it on my hair, like inside the bleach formula just to minimize damage. Like I said, it does work. I just prefer K18's products. I just think they work even that much better. And actually my hairstylist would agree because when I asked her about K18, she kind of whispered to me and she said, I wish we would carry it here in the salon, but we have Olaplex. So the salon owner won't carry K18, but she said when I'm like at home and I'm doing like my mom's hair and my relatives, I use K18 instead of the Olaplex. So of course it's just gonna come down to personal opinion, but that's just my thoughts on it. However, Olaplex does have something that I am super interested in. I'm actually trying them now. They have a brow bond, brow building serum, and also a lash serum. So I'm using both of these currently. I haven't been using them for long, about a week. So I'm gonna have to just maybe show you guys my results after I think it said four weeks, you'll notice a difference. So I will keep you updated. But what I love about these is that they don't have the prostaglandins in the formula. So remember I was talking about Grande Brow. That worked for me and same thing with Grande Lash, although it irritated the heck out of my eyes. That's that ingredient in there that you have to be careful of because it has tons of different side effects, not just irritation, but it can change the color of your eyes and do a host of other kind of scary things. So I would definitely look that up. The Olaplex brow and lash serums don't have that ingredient. I think they're peptide based. So we'll have to see how they work. I'll definitely keep you updated, but I just wanted to mention these because the brow product is new and it might be something to check out if you're shopping the Sephora sale coming up. Next up, we have the brand One Size, and this is a brand I don't really feel qualified to make a decision on a favorite product because I've only tried one thing. I've tried the Turn Up The Base 
foundation and I actually really liked it a lot and it made me want to try more from the brand, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. It had a really beautiful like blurring effect on my skin and I thought it was really nice. It had this moussey sort of texture, but it didn't feel dry. So I've heard really good things about their powder and their setting spray and they have those trio blushes that look really nice. So I'll have to try some more things from them at some point, but if you have some suggestions for me, let me know. Moving on, we have more skincare from The Ordinary. So they're one of my favorite affordable skincare brands. I think they're awesome. And I have a lot of their products right now, but I have three that are my current favorites. So first up is their multi-peptide and copper peptide 1% serum. So this is a really nice anti-aging serum. Peptides are great for helping to relax the look of fine lines and wrinkles. So I've been really enjoying this serum a lot. And I think it's awesome that you can get these really great ingredients for such an affordable price. And I also love their 100% squalane oil. So you remember in the beginning of the video, I was talking about the Biosance one that's $34 and this one is $10 and change. So what I do with this actually is I mix a couple of drops into my moisturizer when my skin is feeling more dry and it just bumps up the moisturization factor and it prevents the water that's in the moisturizer from evaporating throughout the day. It creates that little bit of an oil barrier. So if you're someone who's noticed that your skin, you know, feels good when you first put your skincare on, but then as you go on throughout the day, you start to feel dry and tight again, try adding a couple of drops of this to your moisturizer. It made a huge difference for me. So I really love this a lot. And I have another product that I haven't been using for too long, so I can't really speak to the results, but it's the Argeroline Serum. And I've heard so much about this. It's all over TikTok. People are talking about how this is Botox in a bottle. So Argeroline is supposed to target the muscles underneath your skin to help them like not move as much, I guess. I honestly don't think that skincare really gets down that deep. It might, I don't know, but it's so affordable. I figured I'd just try it and see what happens. So I'm testing this out now. Let me know if you guys have had good results with this or not. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Next up is the brand Way, and this is owned by Jen Atkin, who's a celebrity hairstylist. And I haven't tried too many things from this line either, so I don't have a lot of recommendations for you. But one thing that I have been loving is the detox shampoo. So as you can see, I've used a lot of this already, and my son actually uses it too. We have hard water here at my house because we have a well and there's so many minerals in it. And after a while they build up on your hair, they can make it turn green or really brassy and all these funky colors. So a detox shampoo is a great idea. And this one does say that it removes hard water mineral deposits. So that's one reason that I bought it. Not all of them do. So if you have hard water, you definitely wanna find one that actually says that it does that. This is a product that I use once a week, usually on Sundays, I don't like to use a detox shampoo on the daily only because my hair is dry and I don't want to strip it too much. But I have to say for a detox shampoo, this one is really gentle and it's not as harsh as some that I've used in the past. So this is definitely a good one to check out. Even if you don't have hard water, just if you use a lot of products and you have a lot of buildup or if you use dry shampoo, you're going to want something that's a little bit stronger to help remove that residue. And it just, I don't know, every time I use this that day, I usually added deep conditioner along with this and my hair just has a lot more bounce and life after I use it. So this is a really nice addition to my hair care routine. Moving on to Pat McGrath. If you've been around on my channel for a while, you know that I've always kind of talked about how I think her palettes are overpriced. I've never felt like they were worth all the extra money that they cost. I don't really see a huge difference between like her formula and something like Natasha Denona, which is half the price. So for me, her palettes really aren't it, but I do love her cheek products. Her blushes are fantastic. And my favorite product from her right now is her bronzer. So this is called the Skin Fetish Divine Bronzer and I have it in the shade Nude Honey. It is such a beautiful formula. It's just about weightless on your skin and it has a slightly reddish undertone, which again is the color that I would naturally turn in the sun. So it's really soft. I think it's super complimentary to my skin tone. And when I blend this on my skin, it doesn't look muddy. It's just super, super smooth and silky. So don't get me wrong. I do love the Gucci bronzer that I mentioned earlier in the video. I would say that one's probably my number one, but if you don't want to spend $65 on a bronzer, this one is 39, which is still expensive, but not that expensive. So if you're looking to splurge or treat yourself on a bronzer, I think 
think this one is another really, really solid option. I do use this quite a bit. Next up is Patrick Ta, and I would say my favorite product from him is probably the Major Dimension 2 palette. So I have tried his blush and bronzer duos, which I think are really nice, but the palettes definitely have my heart, and the original Major Dimension palette I think is beautiful also. It's like more of a nude color story, but Major Dimension 2 I think is my favorite because it has these gorgeous rosy tones, and the shimmer shades along the top have this beautiful, duochrome finish most of them so it is just the most stunning palette you also have these cream shades over here but they're under a little door so they don't dry out or get powder in them which i thought was a really great idea and i just think the formula is fantastic i just want to swatch some of the shimmer shades because i feel like you have to see just the dimension that's in these so here are all the shimmers that are in the palette and they are just so gorgeous they have like a really foiled appearance and most of them have a little bit bit of a shift so I just love how they catch the light and they give your eyes sort of that wet look. The matte shades in the palette are also incredibly soft and easy to blend so I just think it's a really Gorgeous formula, definitely my favorite thing from Patrick Ta. Next up we have Paula's Choice. I don't have anything currently from her line, but I've tried a couple of things. My favorite was probably her BHA 2% liquid. So that's kind of similar to the Alpen Beauty one that I talked about in the beginning of the video. It really helps to smooth and refine your pores. It makes your skin baby soft. It's just not a product that I like to use daily because I have drier skin and I find that it kind of makes it a little bit drier. So it's something that I can really only use once in a while, but I haven't repurchased it now because I have the Alpen one. So I'm gonna use that first. And then I may go back to Paula's Choice. I just started using the Alpen, so I'm not sure how they compare, but they have really similar ingredients. So there's probably not a huge difference between them. Also, when it comes to Peter Thomas Roth, this is a brand that I haven't tried in quite a while. I used to use their Potent C Serum, which is a really nice vitamin C serum. It's a very stable form. It's not ascorbic acid like the matter of fact product that I talked about. It's a different version of it that's less likely to cause irritation. So that might be something to look into. I had really good results with that product. And I've also used his Retinol Fusion PM. And this was one of the few retinol products that didn't irritate my skin because it has a slow release formula. So I would put it on at night and it doesn't release all the retinol into your skin at once. It kind of slowly does it over the course of wearing it. So I did really like that as well, but I haven't tried any of his newer products that have come out since those two. And we're talking probably like 10 years ago I used those other ones so if there's something new and exciting from him that you really like definitely let me know down below next up when it comes to rare beauty I think this line has a lot of really beautiful products that I enjoy and a lot of you are probably thinking I'm gonna say her liquid blushes but I'm actually not a fan of those because they're too intense for me. I feel like when I put those on, I have to be super careful not to go overboard. They're just too pigmented and I usually prefer a blush that's a little less pigmented and more buildable. While those are okay, I wouldn't say they're my absolute favorite product. If I had to pick one, it would probably be the bronzer stick. So I have it in two colors. The first one I had gotten was Power Boost and I felt like this color was a little bit too yellowy for me, so it wasn't my favorite and then a few months later she had released some newer shades and I got the shade bright side which is a little bit more my speed it's a little bit cooler toned but what I absolutely love about these and here's the color by the way so we have bright side which is the cooler one and then this is power boost down here but these are the silkiest bronzer I have ever tried they're the most effortless blend ever they almost turn into a powder when you touch them and it takes pretty much no effort to just blend these out with either a brush or a sponge. You could even use your fingers and there's zero tackiness. It's not gonna mess with your foundation or even if you apply these on top of powder, I think you would be fine. So for me, these are more of a unique product because I haven't tried any other bronzer stick that is this silky and lightweight and that blends out this easily. So these are incredible. Next up, we have the brand Say. Unfortunately, I haven't tried too many things from this line either. I've only tried two products, their liquid blush and then their blush lighters that they came out with more recently. So I figured I would just show you those really quickly because I don't feel like I've tried enough of their products to say that anything is my favorite. So first up we have the Glow Sculpt Blush and this is in the shade Mauve Glow. And this is technically a powder, I think, but it's such a creamy powder that it almost feels like a cream when you touch it. 
it's really beautiful and it has a little bit of a glowy finish. So let me just show you what this looks like. It is beautiful. Like, look at that. You really don't need highlighter if you're gonna wear a blush like this because it just makes your cheeks shine, but it also is very silky and really refined. So there's no chunky glitter or anything like that in it. It's just a really beautiful, smooth formula. And then I have the liquid blush in the shade Chili, and this is really pretty as well. It comes with a little doe foot applicator. I'm just gonna put this on next to the other one. This color is actually what drew me in because it's the prettiest rose pink. So here's that one right on top. Isn't that so gorgeous? It has that effect of like just coming in from the cold. Like remember that whole cold girl trend that everybody was doing for a while? It looks like that. I feel like it's a shade that would look good on so many different people. It's just gorgeous. Next we have Sephora Collection and I have a bone to pick with them because they keep discontinuing my favorite products and I am so annoyed because I loved their eyeshadow sticks. Their blushes, like the original blushes were really good and I don't like the new ones. They discontinued the matte lip balms that were like the NARS. It seems like every time I like one of their products, they get rid of it. But there is one that's kind of stuck around that I really like and it's their Best Skin Ever foundation. This is just a really nice natural looking foundation that has, I would say light to medium coverage, a very, very skin-like finish. So it looks like you're not really wearing makeup. So if you like a really, like I said, natural looking foundation, I think this is a really nice option and it comes in a ton of different colors. It's just one of those really easy to use formulas that's not finicky. So it goes on nicely, no matter what skincare I'm wearing, if I didn't moisturize that well, or if I did, it just kind of always looks good. So I think this is definitely worth checking out from Sephora collection. And I also really think their brushes are fantastic too. So. If if you're in the market for good makeup brushes, I think that entire line is worth trying as well. Next, when it comes to Shiseido, I haven't tried anything Shiseido in so long. I really don't have any recommendations for you, but if you have some for me, let me know. I know that a lot of people love their foundation. I've seen really good reviews on it. I just haven't pulled the trigger and I know they have a ton of skincare as well. I don't feel like their line is very makeup heavy at Sephora. It's more skincare than anything, but they do also have some complex products. So let me know what your thoughts are on Shiseido. Next, when it comes to Simi Haze, I did talk about this brand. I want to say it was last year when it came out. I hated everything I tried. So I would just avoid this brand altogether if you can. I thought the products were expensive and they really just didn't perform well. And I kind of saw that across the board from a lot of different YouTube videos and reviews that I was watching at the time when they first launched. I didn't see a ton of people who really loved this. So I don't know how long it's actually gonna stick around at Sephora, we'll see. SK2 is another brand that I've really only tried their famous product, which is their Essence. It is incredibly expensive. I used the entire bottle and. And I didn't really notice any difference in my skin at all. Not to mention those same fermented ingredients that they have are in a lot of other skincare brands from Korea, particularly uh, Misha, their Time Revolution Essence is pretty much, I think, a spot on dupe for SK2. So if it's something that you've been wanting to try, just go ahead and grab that one because from what I've read and seen, it's the same thing. Next up, I wanted to talk about Skylar. This is a perfume brand, and I was initially drawn to it because the owner said that she developed the brand after her daughter had an allergic reaction to perfume. So this is a hypoallergenic line, and as I get older, I've noticed that I can react to certain perfumes, or you know, I get a headache from it. They can be too much for me. So that's initially what drew me to the line, but also this fragrance called Boardwalk Delight, and I have talked about this on my channel before, for. It is one of my favorite perfumes ever. To me, it smells like when you walk into an ice cream shop and it smells like the sweetness of like the ice cream and the candy. There's a little bit of cotton candy note in there and also like waffles maybe. It's definitely more of a gourmand fragrance. I think it has a little coconut in there, but it's not coconut heavy. It definitely has vanilla. But as someone who vacations at the Jersey Shore every year and I go to the boardwalk, this just really captures that whole smell of the boardwalk in a perfume, it is amazing and just so nostalgic. Like even smelling it now, 
it just takes me back there. I absolutely love it. This is my favorite, but I think a lot of their scents are really nice. So if you're in Sephora, definitely give them a sniff and see what you think. Next up, we have Smashbox. I haven't tried Smashbox in years, so it's another brand that I really don't have any recommendations for you. But if you guys have recommendations, let us know down in the comments. That would be super, super helpful. When it comes to Sol de Janeiro, I really have enjoyed their original fragrance, but I recently discovered number 59 and the body butter and this smells so incredible. This is my new favorite. I've been wearing this every day and I might date myself with this, but do you guys remember back in the 90s, there was a perfume by Anna Sui and it was called Sui Dreams. It came with like a little purse shaped bottle. I actually still have mine and that was one of my favorite perfumes of all time. It has like a vanilla base, but it has a little bit of floral in there as well, but it's super like warm and cozy. It's just such a nice scent if you like those warm, cozy vibes. To me, this smells identical to that perfume. It is so good and it's not quite as sweet as the original. So it's a little bit more of, I would say like a grown up version. I don't know. I fell in love with this at first scent. I had sprayed a little bit on in the store and kind of walked around for a while and I just kept smelling my wrist and I was like, I have to get this. It smells so good. And then when it comes to Stila, I would say my favorite Stila product is their convertible color blush and lip product but Sephora doesn't carry that. They really don't carry a lot of Stila's products anymore. So I don't know if they're discontinuing them or what's going on, but as far as the products that Sephora does have, my favorite would probably be the Shimmer and Glow liquid eyeshadows. So there've been a lot of liquid eyeshadows out there that have tried to copy these, but this is the original and I just feel like this one is the best. It never goes on patchy, it doesn't crease. Once these dry down, they don't budge and they stay all day. And they have a bunch of different versions. My favorite is the Shimmer and Glow, but they also have like a Glitter and Glow. They have matte ones as well. I don't know if the matte ones are at Sephora actually, but I've seen them at Ulta. So the three shades that I have have our cloud up here which is this gorgeous lavender kind of purple then grace which is a taupe and then we have kitten which is their kind of most famous color so these are all beautiful i just love these for like a one and done type of shadow look next up we have summer fridays my favorite product you guys already know what i'm gonna say it's the lip butter balms so these are fantastic they are such a beautiful formula that's not sticky and they're super hydrating. They're really, really lightweight on your lips and the colors and scents that they come in are the best part. I also recently got their lip oils and I think those are really nice too, but these are definitely my favorite. So we have Poppy up here, which smells like citrus. Brown sugar smells just like brown sugar. It's so good. Vanilla beige has a really nice vanilla scent and then pink sugar smells like pink sugar perfume. So these are all just so delicious. And then when it comes to Sunday Riley, my favorite product that I've tried from them is probably the Good Jeans. I think that one stands out to me the most. I don't currently have it, but I've used it twice. Like I've repurchased it twice and it's a lactic acid treatment that exfoliates your skin. But I found that it's more than that. I've tried other lactic acid products and there's just something about that one that plumps my skin, that my skin just looks so good when I use that. And as I'm talking about it, it's kind of making me want to go back out and get that again. Whenever I would use it at night, I would wake up in the morning and my skin just looked, like I said, it looked plumped up and super smooth. It's just such a nice formula and it's really expensive, but I do think it's worth it because like I said, I've tried other lactic acid products in the past and they just didn't give me the same glow and plumped up effect to my skin. So I think that is a really good one. And the Sephora sale is a great time to try it because at least you get somewhat of a discount. Next up, when it comes to Super Goop, I would say my favorite is their new Protect Tint Tinted Moisturizer. Before this came out, I would have said their Glow Screen because that one, it's kind of like a glowy SPF primer and I really like that too. But this is such a nice tinted moisturizer and it has the SPF 50 in it. So I just showed me applying this in a video very recently and I was shocked by the amount of coverage that it has. I have the shade 20C and I think it's a really nice match for me but for a tinted moisturizer I felt like it did cover really well it evened out my skin tone and I just love that it has the SPF so it's like an all-in-one product and it feels super nice and hydrating it gives my skin this nice plumped up effect and a little bit of a dewy glow so I'm really impressed with this and I can definitely see myself using this a lot over the summer because that's the time of year when I need sunscreen the most but I hate applying it because it's like too many layers you know I have my sunscreen or my skincare then sunscreen then a foundation 
in and it just starts to feel heavy after a while when it's hot and humid outside. So I like that this is just one layer and I have both my SPF and the coverage all in one. So I've really, really been enjoying this so far. Next up, when it comes to Tarte, there are a lot of products that I really enjoy from them, specifically their new tubing mascara XL, but that one's exclusive to Ulta right now. It's not at Sephora, so I can't really talk about that. But if I had to pick out of the products that Sephora has, I would probably say they're Amazonian clay blushes. These to me are what stand out the most from Tarte. And the reason for that is because these are one of the longest lasting powder blushes that I have ever tried. For whatever reason, my skin likes to eat blush and it's so hard to get it to last all day, but this formula in particular just holds on for dear life and I can see it all the way up until the time I go to bed. My favorite shade is probably Party because it's just like this gorgeous dusty pink and it's kind of like a pinky nude too. So I feel like it goes with a lot of different things. No matter what eye look I have, I can just put this on and it'll coordinate nicely. It's just a really nice neutral. So this is the one that I think I reach for the most, but I like all the colors that I have and I think it's a really fantastic formula. All right, what are we up to? Next is Tatcha. So I think you all know what I'm gonna say for this one. It's their Dewy Skin Cream. This is my ultimate favorite moisturizer of all time. There's just something really special about it and I wish it didn't cost so much, but I have never found anything that has this exact same texture. This is my third jar and as you can see, I'm pretty close to the bottom already. It is just the nicest moisturizer for dry skin. It has this kind of thick and cushiony, really rich texture. It's so hard to describe it, but it just makes my skin dewy and it keeps it that way all day. The closest moisturizer that I have that compares to this is the Fresh Rose one that I talked about earlier in the video. That one has a similar texture, but I think this one is still a little bit more hydrating and it lasts longer, like the hydration lasts longer on me throughout the day. So despite trying to find dupes for this, I still haven't been successful. I would love to know if you guys have found anything that compares to the texture of this at the drugstore or just any affordable brand because it is really expensive, but it's one of the products that I just splurge on over and over again because I love it that much. Next up is Tom Ford, and would you even believe it, I don't have anything from Tom Ford. Never tried the brand before, so I'd love to hear your suggestions down in the description box. It is super expensive, and I've heard really mixed reviews, so I just never wanted to like lay out the cash to try something, but if there's anything that you feel is really worth the money, leave it down below. Uh, next up is Too Faced. So Too Faced does have a lot of really nice products. I'm a huge fan of their Cloud Crush blushes. Those are really nice and soft and silky, really smooth. Their palettes for me lately have been hit or miss, although they used to be one of my favorite eyeshadow brands. I would say the product from Too Faced that I use the most, that I've repurchased now three times, is their Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. I know I talk about this a lot in videos, so I'm not gonna go too far into it, but it is just the nicest brow gel ever. It doesn't make your brows stiff or crunchy, yet it has all day hold. And inside the cap, it also comes with a brush and a comb. So it's really nice because once you slick your brows in place with the gel, then you can comb them out and make them look really nice. I just love this. I've tried so many other brow gels from high-end brands like Anastasia, from drugstore brands, and this is the one I keep going back to. It doesn't make my brows like waxy, and it also, like I said, it doesn't make them feel dry or crunchy. It's just perfect. So. I love this. I will continue to repurchase it as long as they make it. Moving on to Tower 28, I have really enjoyed a lot of their products. I used to love their cream blushes, but ever since Moira came out with a dupe for those, I've been gravitating more toward the Moira ones. Not only are they less expensive, but also they last longer because Tower 28 being the clean brand, they don't put, I think, a lot of preservatives in their products and the, they seem to turn really quickly. So if I had to pick something, I have been trying out these new lip softies from them. They're tinted lip balms and I really like them a lot. And I think if I use these up within a relatively short amount of time, I'll be okay. But they smell phenomenal. I have this Dolce de Leche one that it's heavenly. Like the scent, when you put it on your lips, you just wanna eat it, it smells so good. And I also have Watermelon Kiwi, 
which smells amazing as well. And they have quite a bit of color for a tinted lip balm. They have a really nice creamy feel. They're just really, really nice overall. They're not sticky in any way and they're really, really hydrating, almost like a lip mask. So I'm enjoying these a lot. I just got them very recently, but I think they might be worth checking out if you love a tinted lip balm that smells good enough to eat. Then from Urban Decay, this one is kind of tricky because I used to love their eyeshadow palettes, but not really anymore. There's a lot of products that they've discontinued that I just really was enjoying and now they're gone. So one of the products I really like a lot is their Hydromaniac tinted moisturizer. This is such a nice formula because it's super moisturizing like a tinted moisturizer should be, but it actually has pretty decent coverage. So in some ways it reminds me a bit of the IT Cosmetics CC Nude Glow, the one that I talked about earlier in the video. I have the shade 30 light also, which I think is a pretty good match for me. And I think it actually matches me better than the IT Cosmetics one does. It's not quite as dark as that one. And look at the coverage on it, yet it actually feels really, really nice. It feels like a moisturizer basically. And it doesn't accentuate or cling to any dry patches. It just looks really nice on my skin all day. And I think it has pretty good staying power as well. Also from Urban Decay, I'm a big fan of their 24 seven gel pencil eyeliners. I think those have awesome staying power and they're super creamy. The LA Girl ones at the drugstore though are kind of similar as well as the Koki Cosmetics drugstore ones. So I feel like you can get a similar eyeliner a little bit cheaper, but one that I think is pretty unique is their 24 seven inks liquid eyeliner. This has the coolest packaging, first of all. It goes into a triangle shape where you hold it. So it's really ergonomic and it keeps your hand really steady while you're applying it. I have the shade Whiskey, which is a brown, but I definitely wanna get some more colors. So I just wanna show you, it has like a really nice brush tip. It's nicely pigmented, it doesn't skip. And I feel like it just draws such a nice line. The brush is really skinny. So this has been one of my favorite liquid eyeliners and it also is very long lasting as well. So I feel like it lasts all day on me. Moving on to the letter V, we have Vegamore. And Vegamore, I have tried quite a few of their products. I've tried their Hydrate line, the shampoo and conditioner and leave-in spray are really nice for dry hair, but I found them all to be a little bit too heavy for me and I hate the smell of them too. They have this kind of musky, like florally perfume that kind of reminds me of perfumes out of the 70s. So it, it's almost like a patchouli type base and it's not my favorite scent. I know some people will probably really like it, but for me, it, it's like the type that gives me a headache a little bit. My favorite product from them is probably their Grow Hair Serum. So I got this a while ago back in, August, I had skin cancer on my scalp. I had it removed and I had stitches for a while and I had this huge bald spot right here. And it took forever for my hair to start growing in for a couple of months, it, all throughout the fall. I didn't see any growth, no hair coming through. So I ended up getting this just to kind of try to speed things along. And I think when I first noticed the hair sort of growing back, it was November and now we're in March and my hair is actually growing back really nicely. You can't see the bald spot anymore. And I have to slick this down because the hairs kind of stick straight up if I don't, but they, they go out to about here, which is pretty long. I don't want to totally mess up my hair now, but I would say it goes to about here. I have maybe like three, four inches of growth, which I think is pretty good. And you can't even tell that anything was there anymore. So I've had good results with this and I haven't been using it super consistently, but I've seen other reviews of it and like the before and afters are really incredible. So I think it's a good product. I really do think that it works. So if you're looking for a hair growth serum, this is definitely one to check out. Next up, we have the brand Verb. So this is another hair care brand and my favorite product from them is their ghost oil. I just got a new bottle of this recently and I love this because it's a weightless hair oil, at least that's how, what they call it. But again, for my fine hair, it's something that doesn't weigh it down. Down. It feels really hydrating and it calms the frizz to an extent, not as much as the Moroccan oil spray that I talked about. But if I just want like a finishing serum, something to put on the ends or like maybe from the middle to the ends, it's really, really nice. So if you have fine hair, I think this is a great one. 
I have tried the ghost shampoo and conditioner when I was on vacation. I went into an Ulta and I got like the little um, travel sizes and I used it throughout my whole vacation in the hotel because let's face it, hotel shampoo and conditioner are never that great. Um, and it was just okay. I didn't love it as much as I love the oil. So it wasn't something that I felt like I wanted to go and repurchase, but I think the ghost oil is definitely more of a unique product because it's so lightweight. Moving on, we have Westman Atelier. I haven't tried a ton of products from them, but I have tried some of like their cult classic favorites. And my absolute two favorite products um, are their stick blushes. I have two different ones. I have the mini version, which I got first. I liked it so much. I ended up going back and getting another shade in the bigger version. The mini only comes in, I think just the one color and that's petal which really is my favorite shade from them. It's the most beautiful nude pink. So I'm just gonna swatch these for you guys. And then the other one is called Dow Dow. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I always wanna say doo doo when I look at it. It's D-O-U-D-O-U. -D -O -U. So I don't know, I don't know which one is correct, but doo doo sounds kind of gross. So anyway, here's Petal and it's just the most beautiful nude pink. And then this one is Dow Dow up here. And I love this formula. Again, it's something that dries right to a powder finish. It blends out on the skin so nicely and it's really long lasting too. Like I can get all day wear out of these. They're nicely pigmented, but if you don't want clown cheeks, you can just use a little tiny bit and you'll be good to go. So I feel like they'll last a really long time as well. So those are beautiful. I also love their contour stick. So I have mine in the shade Biscuit and I did get the full size in this too. And, and oh my gosh, this color is so perfect for me. It technically is a contour stick, but I really use it as a bronzer because it's not so cool toned that it looks really gray. It does have that little bit of warmth to it, but it's also a cooler undertone. So I think it just goes really well with my skin tone and it's not too light or too deep. Like when you blend it out, it really just is the perfect color to warm up my skin. So you can see it's really just such a nice color and it's the same exact formula as the blush sticks. So again, really silky, really smooth, easy to blend out and it dries to that powdery finish. So I love both of these. All right guys, we're almost there. So next we have Youth to the People and I have tried quite a few of their skincare products. I've tried their cleanser, which was really nice. I've also tried their super berry oil, which I also thought was nice, but they're a little bit more expensive. And like I said before, I've been using mostly K-Beauty products lately, so I haven't really gone back to them, but they did just recently come out with a bath and body line and I've been loving this shower gel. This is their superfood and niacinamide body cleanser. So it's kind of like the body version of their face cleanser. And this is so nice. Even my husband and my son use it because it has like this really spa-like scent that's unisex. So it's kind of like a woody type of a fragrance. I don't know if it actually says on the bottle. Yeah, it's aromatic notes of cedar wood, black pepper, and fresh greens that are supposed to uplift you. And it really does have a nice uplifting, refreshing scent. When I get in the shower in the morning, I love using this. And it's also so gentle, it doesn't dry out my skin. So I really like this. I wanna put one in the guest bathroom too because I think anytime we have people stay over, it's just one of those things that women will like it, men will like it, kids will like it. It's just kind of a universal body wash. It's really, really nice. Next up we have YSL and I have two products to share from them. The first one is the Touche Eclat Primer. And this is one of my favorite primers because it has an oil base and you rarely see that in primer, but this makes my foundation look smooth like no other primer out there. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I do like the Cali Ray So Blown one. It's a really nice pore blurring formula, but this one, especially if your skin is dry, it looks like a gel but when you blend this out, it does have that really slippery primer-like feel, but the oils that are in the formula make your foundation just glide on your skin. And even the driest foundation formulas will still look good, not to mention that this blurs your pores as well. 
and it gives you such a nice airbrushed look. I wish you guys could feel how smooth this is right now because it's just the perfect canvas. Now, I do wanna mention if you have more oily skin, you might wanna steer clear of this because like I said, it does have oil in the formula. So it might feel a little bit more greasy, but for somebody with dry skin, it is heavenly. It's really expensive, but again, one of those products that's worth it. I just picked up a second bottle, but it is, amazing. And I also wanted to mention their little couture clutch eyeshadow palette. So I have mine in the shade 100 and this is like the more neutral one, but they have one that has rosy tones that I think is so pretty. And I think this formula is great. I'm just going to swatch this quick because it's such a small palette. It's just like the perfect mini neutral palette. I love these sort of cooler tone taupey colors. And you have this one shade that's just really metallic and reflective. You have a couple of satin shades. You have this really deep dark matte and they're just so soft and pigmented. I wasn't expecting that at all when I tried this. So this is definitely making me want to go back and maybe grab the rosy toned one during the sale because I, I use this all the time. And I feel like it's something that I will definitely be packing in my travel bag this summer. So anyway, guys, that's the entire video. This took me two days to film and it's probably gonna take several more to edit, but I feel like it was worth it. And I hope that this was helpful and that you can use it as a reference guide to come back to. Maybe I'll make another one next year or in six months. Let me know what would be the most helpful for you guys as you know, my favorites might change over time. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below and let me know what your favorite products are at Sephora as well. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this. I really, truly appreciate it, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Thank you, that's amazing. And if you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. And if by chance you have some extra time and you'd like to watch some more of my videos, I'll just put a playlist right up here that you could check out next. Thank you guys so much and I will see you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.